I want to quickly discuss is just the configuration of the server and how you can set it up if you decide to, to do your own. Of course you will not be able to do it on the Battle Bros beta server uh, because that will be managed uh, on our side. But if you do then want to buy your own server or want to set up your own server, uh, this video will show you very quickly how to do that and uh, some of the, the important settings to look at. So the way that you do it is you select your server and you simply place, press the triangle button and that will take you to the configuration of the server. So you can see there's a couple of things there. The first thing that you can see is the the actual details of the server in terms of the name. <coughs> it allows you three options there. It allows you to change the name of the server. It uh, allows you an opportunity to put in a description for the server and then a message that will appear uh, while the server is loading up. So uh, I haven't put anything in the description, neither have I put anything in the message screen. Uh, but of course you're more than welcome to put anything in there you want to. And uh, before we put the server out for people to be able to access it, we'll put some, some information in there as well. The next option is maps and modes. So at the moment you can see on the right hand side that we have Amiens Conquest running. And right underneath that there's a little plus sign and if you click on that, it will allow you to then select different maps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select Foul Fortress for the moment and you will see that it will then automatically move on to pretty much part 2 of 2 when it says game selection um, on the top left hand of the screen and this is where you can actually select the game mode. So we've selected um, Foul Fortress and let's say for Foul Fortress we want to do a War Pigeon. Now you will see that if you if you back on the configuration menu, when you go down to maps and modes, it, it has now added two maps uh, to the server in the in the rotation. The first still being Amiens Conquest, and the next being Foul Fortress War Pigeon. So I'm just going to add another one, and what we'll add is we'll add Argon Forest, and we'll say we want to do a rush. Now if you go back to maps and modes. You will see there are now three maps uh, and three different modes in the map rotation. So it will allow you to now play Amiens Conquest. After that game finishes, you will be able to play Foul Fortress War Pigeon. And then of course, uh, you can. Uh, after that, you will be able to play Argon Forest Rush. So the nice thing about this is you can really set up a diverse sort of gameplay with different map modes and different maps. You can even add two of the same maps uh, in a row just with different game modes. So that's quite a quite a nice feature on the on the map as well, or, or on the uh, server configuration. So moving on from how you uh, add um, maps to your map rotation, well, maybe one one last thing to mention before we move off that point. If ever you want to actually remove a map as well, if you go onto the specific map on the right hand side, so in other words, under the maps and modes tab, and you move over to the right. Let's say we select Foul Fortress that we've just added. You'll see that the square button at the bottom allows you to actually remove that map from the map rotation completely. So, uh, so that's quite a nice feature. So, um, one thing that I think is also important to mention, guys, is that whoever owns the server can add uh, map rotations at any time, but they will only take effect once the, the server, the next time the server starts. In other words, the game that is currently on the server will play through and it will end, and when the, the, the server loads up again, then only the new map rotation will start. So at any time you can add and remove maps or, or um, you know, change the server rotation in whichever way you like. So moving on to the next option, uh, that is weapons. At the moment all is selected and you can see on the right hand side there's all the weapons that are available. Melee, a shotgun, handgun, explosive, LMG, SMG, self-loading weapons, all the different weapons that are available are there and they've got tick marks um, and if you for example only want to create a map or a game uh, where you have uh, where everybody plays with knives then of course you will only tick melee and untick everything else that will then allow people that play on the server to only play if they are playing with melee weapons so they will have to disarm all the other weapons um, or they will not be able to to be to play on the server next uh, below weapons we have kits <coughs> very similar concept to weapons but this is uh, where you can uh, only arm specific uh, specific kits on the server. So for example, say you wanted to create a, a server where you only want assault players to play or only scout classes, then you can simply select scout and deselect everything else and the server will only allow uh, players that play scout 
onto that server. Now, it doesn't mean that if you normally play Assault, you won't be allowed onto the server. It simply means that once you load into the game, the only class that you are able to select will be a Scout, if you have selected that it's only a Scout server. So that's that's uh, quite an interesting feature. I'm not exactly sure how many people will be using that, but um, I think it's, it's nice that they have it there. Below kits you have vehicles, um, and that's very, very simple. You've either got land vehicles or air, air vehicles, and you can either enable or disable both. Um, I think if you wanted to do a infantry sort of map, uh, maybe, or an infantry sort of gameplay server, then of course you would probably untick both land and air vehicles, not allowing for any vehicles on the server. Um, so that might be interesting as well. Moving on from vehicles to the miscellaneous settings, and there's a number of miscellaneous, uh, miscellaneous settings here. Uh, let's start at the top. Uh, the first is kill cam on or off. So kill cam is obviously the camera that you that you have once you've died um, that actually shows you who killed you. Um, if you turn that off, then of course uh, you will not see where that person was that killed you. Now I think this is uh, <laughs> probably a setting that I will not be turning off. Uh, especially if you've got a camping sniper somewhere that you might want to see and see where you want to go and get him. Uh, so I think that's a setting that I will definitely keep on. Uh, the next one is HUD. Uh, you can either turn that on or off as well. Um, that includes things like uh, damage hit indicators. Um, it very similar. To, if you turn that off, your game will look very similar to what it looks like in hardcore mode. So a lot of the, the HUD visibility will, will be gone. The next one is friendly fire on or off. Uh, again, I'm not sure how many people will be turning this will be turning this on. Uh, it is off by default, uh, so friendly fire doesn't hurt you. But of course, you can turn that on. Uh, regenerate or regenerate health. Uh, this is simply the option that uh, allows you to regenerate your health after a specific period of time. If you turn this off, then of course you will, the players inside the the um, server will not regenerate health at all. 3D spotting on or off. Um, if you guys are, are familiar with what 3D spotting is, um, it's, for example, if you are running towards an objective and uh, you are the leader of a squad and you aim uh, at the, 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 the particular um, point that you want to take and you use your spot button, automatically what will happen is that the target will be marked for your squad. Now the function uh, that is performed when you do that is called 3D spotting and you can actually enable or disable that um, on a particular server. Minimap spotting, uh, this refers to spotting players uh, th uh, that will appear on the minimap for your squad. Uh, you can actually turn it off which means that even if you spot a player they might appear to, uh, for your team uh, with the with the little red dot above them that they have been spotted but they will not appear on the minimap. Again I'm not sure exactly why you would want to turn this off but maybe you would like to or maybe you won't. Uh, the, op the next option is called always fog. So this is an interesting one. Uh, by default it is off but if you turn it on it means that the fog never goes away. So <laughs> I'm not sure Scully I don't know how you feel about that but um, man I would definitely like to play with less fo fog. <laughs> I don't know, I disagree, you know, I'm the kind of guy who likes to play with a knife and I think to be, uh, you know, sneaky within the fog gives you the edge to uh, get a bit more knife kills, if that's your flavor or that's your thing that you like to do. So okay. I would prefer to have, I don't know, if uh, is it possible to do a setting for the fog just to come in maybe halfway through the game? I don't know if you can see that setting, is there something like that available? No, actually at the moment it looks like that particular setting is either on or off. So if you turn it on, um, and I actually tested this on the server this afternoon, if you turn it on it looks like the fog remains the whole time. So it okay. actually doesn't uh, you know, go away at all. So if you turn it on you will have a foggy map, it doesn't matter which map you play on and it will be all the time. <laughs> okay, so it doesn't roll in like it is currently with the, you know, if you play a normal conquest and uh, the weather elements are activated, let's say, halfway through the game. To no, change the gameplay. No, it doesn't seem that way. But what was interesting this afternoon when I tested it is that uh, it was also rainy. So the rain actually did stop at some point, but the fog didn't go away. So it seems that there's still some weather conditions that take place, uh, but definitely the fog remains. Okay, so you would have a map like Amiens, which only have a little bit of rain coming in on the map, which I am on now. Yep. If you activate the fog, there will actually be fog. Correct. 
there will always be fog on. So what I'm going to do is, just so that we can also test that part of the server, is I'm going to turn fog always on. So Scully, if you in the meantime want to exit the server, and then uh, yes. I'll, t I'll tell you once I've done the update to the to the server, uh, if we load back in, there should be fog then. Uh, let's just cover these last, this last uh, one or two points. Uh, obviously, the after always fog, you have uh, um, an option called name tags on and off, and that's purely the, that you are able to see the the name tag above a player when you are aim aiming at them. Uh, if you turn this off, it'll also take off the name tag ab uh, above your friendly player, so that actually does make it slightly more difficult to see who is who until you aim at them, and then of course you'll you'll see uh, your friendly player's name, but you won't see the name tags of of the enemy players. <coughs> then, guys, moving back over to the left under the last part of the the server, and that is rules. Now the rules are very simple, it's very self-explanatory as well. They are bullet damage, ticket count, respawn time and vehicle spawn time. They are set in percentages and if you double the percentages it simply means double. In other words, if you have 200% uh, bullet damage, bullets will do 200% damage. Very self-explanatory. Ticket count, you can also push up to 200. Uh, respawn time, if you increase this for example to 200, it, you will literally spawn within half the time that you normally do. So if it normally takes you 10 seconds to spawn, it will take you 5 seconds as an example. Um, and then of course vehicle respawn times work uh, in very much the same way. Sorry guys, I just need to rectify something. If you change the respawn time to 200, it will take you double the time. So if you want to make the, the respawn time shorter, you have to lower the percentage. Yeah, so I just want to know, if you look at the server settings, will, it, will you be able uh, to do a 50%, 100% and 200% or is it only 100% and 200%? So let's just take the bullet damage as an example. If you click on bullet damage, it will allow you increment of 50%, uh, 100 obviously, 125 and 200. So 200 at so the moment is the maximum percentage that you can go to, uh, but those are the increments that it will allow you. Okay, so 200% bullet damage will be equivalent to a full-on hardcore match. 100%. Well, in this case, 200% then. <laughs> yeah, 200%. 200%. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> um, it, it, you net now can say that the maps, you can verskill in the maps, and elke map can verskill in the game mode there. Correct. And how many is the maximum maps that you can lie? I don't think we must check. I need play ad. Behind every gun sight is a human being. We are those people. Promise me that you'll get me back in one piece. Okay, I promise. Come on! You may find you're out there all alone. You know that. You can never stop the progress of machines.